Hi, my name is Brian Smith, and this is video 7 of the RHEL for Edge series. In this video, I'll cover an overview of the RPM OS tree file system. At a high level, the user directory contains the OS binaries and files, and is mounted read-only and is immutable. The var directory is mounted read-write, is shared between deployment images, and is where data can be written to. Each image also has their own read-write Etsy directory to store system configuration. The var and Etsy directories are the only supported locations for writing data or system configuration. In this video, I've built a new rel for edge system from the original image with a commit hash that starts with CBF, which is the image I created in video 1. Let's start by taking a look at what the root file system looks like on a rel for edge system. You might notice a few differences from what you're used to seeing on a RPM-based version of RHEL. So let's take a look at these side by side. On the left, we'll have a RHEL for Edge system based on RPM OS tree, and on the right, we have a traditional RHEL system based on RPM. I'll first highlight the directories that they have in common, but that are different on a RPM OS tree based system. The main difference is that home, MNT, opt, root, and SRV on the RPM OS tree based system are all symbolic links into directories under slash var. On an RPM OS tree based system, the var directory is where persistent data should be placed, which is why several of these directories are now symbolic links into directories under var. For example, the symbolic link for slash home will cause the home directories to be placed in slash var slash home. There are also a couple of directories that are unique to an RPM OS tree based system, and those are the OS tree and sysroot directories, which I'll cover in more detail later in the video. Other than var and etsy, most of the rest of the file system is read only. For example, if I cd into slash user and try to create a file, I'll get a message that it's a read-only file system. It's important to note that the var directory is shared between deployments. In most cases, you'll have two deployment images available, which will usually be the image you're currently booted from, and then the previous image before you last updated. You can reboot the system and from the bootloader choose to boot from either of these deployments. And in either case, the same var directory is going to be mounted. So for example, you could create a file under slash var, reboot, select the other deployment, and the file would still be visible as they both share the same var directory. The etsy directory works differently, as each deployment has its own separate writable etsy directory. If I had two deployment images, and I created a file under etsy, and then booted from the other deployment, the file would no longer show up under etsy, because each deployment has its own etsy. As part of an RPM OS tree upgrade, a new writable Etsy directory is created for the new deployment, and it's created by doing a three-way diff between the old default configuration, the active systems Etsy, and the new default configuration. Let's take a look at an example of this. I'm currently using the image that starts with the CBF commit hash, and I'm going to create a file under slash var and a file under slash Etsy. And in both of those files, I'll just put um, the text, this file was created while booted from the CBF image. I'll also make a note of the inode numbers for each of these files. The file under etsy has an inode that ends in 459, and the file in var has an inode that ends in 199. There is an image update available that has a commit hash that starts with 807. And I'll go ahead and upgrade this system using an RPM OS tree upgrade command. As part of the upgrade, there is a new etsy directory created for the updated deployment, and it's created by doing a three-way diff between the old default configuration, the active systems etsy, and the new default configuration from the updated image. So the new file I just created under etsy will be copied into the new deployments etsy, however, it's going to be a copy of the file and they won't be sharing the exact same file, which we'll see throughout the rest of the demo. So I'll go ahead and reboot the system with a systemctl reboot command, and then I'll go ahead and skip the video ahead a little bit to give the system some time to reboot, and then I'll connect back again over SSH, sudo back to the root account, and run a RPM OS tree status. And as you can see, the system is now booted off the upgraded 807 commit hash. Then I'll list the inodes for the files I created previously when we were booted from the CBF deployment. Note that the inode for the file under var is the exact same inode, and that's because the var directory is shared between deployments. Also note that the inode for the file under etsy is different. That's because a new etsy was created for the 807 deployment during the upgrade by doing a three-way diff as previously discussed. So the content of the file is the same, however it is a copy of the file and they're not sharing the same inode number. 
To further demonstrate this, I'll append a line to both of these files and then I'll reboot back into the CBF deployment. So I'm going to add an additional line to each file that says added some text while booted from the 807 deployment. I'll then go ahead and cat the file so you can see the contents. And then I'm going to go ahead and reboot the system with a systemctl reboot. And when I get to the bootloader, I'll select the second option to boot into the CBF deployment. I'll skip the video ahead a little bit to give the system time to boot up, and then I'll connect to it over SSH. I'll sudo back to the root account and run RPM OS tree status. As you can see, I'm now booted from the CBF deployment. I'll display the file under var, and you can see that it shows the text that was appended while we were booted into the 807 deployment. Again, that's because they share the same var directory. I'll then display the file under the Etsy directory, and you can see that it does not show that text that we appended when we were booted into the 807 deployment. And again, that's because they have a separate writable copy of Etsy. Next, I'll cover how this is actually laid out on the disk and file system. I'll start by running fdisk-l, and you can see on this system I have a 20 gig disk named VDA with three partitions. The VDA1 partition is used for the boot file system. The VDA2 partition is used for swap space, and the VDA3 partition is actually mounted at slash sysroot. Let's take a look at that slash sysroot directory. I'll list the contents of the directory, and you can see that there are quite a few subdirectories under slash sysroot. However, other than the OS tree directory, these directories are almost completely empty. So let's focus on the slash sysroot slash OS tree directory. And remember, under the root directory, there is a slash OS tree symbolic link that links to slash sysroot slash OS tree. So we can use the slash OS tree and slash sysroot slash OS tree interchangeably. Next, we'll take a look at the slash OS tree slash deploy slash rel directory. Now, the last part, the rel part of that directory, might be different on your system. If you remember way back to video one in the kickstart file on the OS tree setup line, I had specified that the OS name equals rel, which is why this directory is named rel. So if you had chosen something different, it might show up differently on your system. In this directory, there's a deploy directory as well as a var directory. The OS tree deploy rel var is where the var is mounted at from our system, and we can confirm that by running find mount slash var. So in other words, this is the actual location of our shared var directory that is used when the system boots from either deployment. Next, I'll list out the contents of the OS tree slash deploy slash rel slash deploy directory. Note that we see two directories here and that the names line up with the commit hashes from the RPM OS tree status output. And if I run find mount on slash user, it will show that the slash user directory source is slash OS tree deploy rel deploy, and then the CBF image that we are currently booted from slash user. The slash or root directory, which includes Etsy, has a source of OS tree, deploy, rel, deploy, and then the CBF commit hash that we're currently booted from. So I can actually display the contents of that test file I've been working with under Etsy from each deployment's writable copy of Etsy by running a cat and then specifying OS tree deploy rel deploy and then each image's commit hash and then the slash Etsy and the path to the file. And you can see that the contents of the file are different just as we've seen as we've booted into these two different deployments in the previous examples. Okay, now let's focus on the slash user directory. The source for the user directory on the running system is OS tree slash deploy slash rel slash deploy slash the commit hash for the image we're currently booted from slash user. Usually when you have two different deployments like this, the vast majority of the files under user will be identical between the two deployments. And that's because usually when you do an RPM OS tree upgrade, only a few of the packages are upgraded or changed on the new version of the image. So if each deployment were to have their own copy of slash user, there would be quite a few duplicated files and binaries between the two. So instead of doing that, which would take a lot of storage space, there are actually hard links from each deployment's user directory 
into the slash OS tree slash repo directory, which is a repository for all the slash user files and binaries for the entire RPM OS tree system. So in cases where both deployments have the exact same binary, they'll have a hard link to the same file under the slash OS tree slash repo directory. And in cases where files have been upgraded or changed on a new deployment, they'll have a hard link to a different file under the slash OS tree slash repo directory. Please note that hard links don't have any kind of actual parent, child, or source destination relationship, and that all hard links are completely equal. So when I refer to the hard links pointing into slash OS tree slash repo, I'm referring to a logical relationship rather than an actual relationship on the file system itself. Let's validate this by looking at the slash user slash bin slash bashes inode number, which you can see ends in the numbers 437. I'll do a search on the slash sysroot slash OS tree directory for this inode number, and we'll find three files that share the same inode number. There's the file under the slash sysroot slash OS tree slash repo directory. And in our logical representation, this is the main source file for the particular version of bash that both of these deployments are using. And in this example, both deployments point to the same file under sysroot OS tree repo because both deployments are using the exact same version of bash. If bash had been upgraded to a newer version in the 807 image, there would be an additional file in the slash sysroot OS tree repo directory, and bash in the 807 image would have a hard link logically pointing to that newer version in the repo directory. Well, thanks a lot for watching the video, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.